Mike with you, Tastic. I'm at RailsConf 2014. I'm standing here with Greg Bagas, who's, uh, and did I say that? Again? He said it right. All yeah. right. So uh, he's been talking about mental health issues in our industry and, and developer depression and other topics. Uh, well, thank you for, for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, what what inspired you to talk about mental health issues and and um, and create the the forum of the discourse forum that you have for yeah. for um, people sharing their stories? What what brought that on? Yeah, so I mean, I guess initially I have type two bipolar and ADD, and uh, I ended up failing out of school. I got I went through a pretty rough bout of depression um, about I guess it's been about ten years ago, um, and then had just a really rough few years, and and uh, I even got diagnosed. I first got diagnosed with ADD and then I, and bipolar, and I kind of like took the ADD and was like told the therapist you can kind of keep the bipolar, um, and and went through like pretty strong denial for a couple of years, um, and life just was like super rough. I was bouncing from job to job, and I was perpetually broke, and um, and just felt like I was always letting my friends down. I was sleeping like 16 hours a day, and and there's just a lot of stuff I wanted to do with my life, and I didn't seem to be able to to like get myself out of bed to do that or, or to make any consistent progress on things like I'd have spurts of productivity and then um, and then I'd be incapacitated um, and I, I couldn't it didn't seem to matter how much I was like you know this time is going to be different um, it just it never was and so uh, eventually I, I kind of was like okay I, you know I don't want to take meds um, I really don't want to have to like admit this like something's wrong but it can't be worse than what I'm in right, right. now you know and so it was just like last resort I figured you know I'll just I'll try something and, and if, if things do get worse then I can come back I know like what this is like so I, I finally started seeing a, a psychiatrist um, and and I got put on meds uh, I take something called Lamictal it's a mood stabilizer so with my type 2 bipolar like uh, I will I'll have like spurts where I'm like super productive and I'll have like weeks when I'm, I'm depressed and this just like evens everything out so I still have highs and lows you know like there's still days when I'm depressed but it's like days and I'm not incapacitated anymore and I still have days when I have more energy and I'm productive but in general, like now, you know, I, I can make plans for a week out with right. confidence that I'll, I'll be able to get out of bed and like be there. So, um, so that happened about five years ago and life just totally turned around. So that's, right. that, that's kind of where I was at. Um, that's a different story though, than why I started speaking about this stuff right. uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, there we had a, a guy working for us at Table XI, this consultancy here in Chicago, and uh, he was so bright. His name was Caleb, and, and he was he was pairing with me and, and helping me learn so much. Um, but he had a lot of the same symptoms that I had had before I got treatment. So I kind of told him my story, and he felt like that that maybe hit a little too close home. So he set up an appointment with a psychiatrist for a couple weeks out, and then um, he called in sick for a couple days before the appointment. And and then, um, and then you know, his appointment set up for a Friday. So I come in on Monday, you know, excited to hear. And Josh, the CEO uh, of Table XI, is like calls me in his office, and he's like, uh, he's like, you know, I have, I have bad news. And I was like, oh, just like Caleb, like is he like sick again or what? And he's like, no, Caleb died. Um, and. We, we found out later that Caleb had been struggling with addiction for a while uh, and he missed his appointment um, and then he died the day after what would have been his first appointment with a psychiatrist. So um, I was scheduled to give a talk on a totally different topic at the office and I was like, how about I just get up and I'm just like, hey, I have bipolar, uh, I have ADD, you know, like I think maybe Caleb had something similar. Um, it, if you all want to talk about it, you know, come find me because the, the biggest problem we have with this stuff is that we don't talk about it. Like people are ashamed yeah, to have this stuff. in our in our industry where it is your mind that is your your tool your your means of production. Yeah, um, you know you can be almost completely physically incapacitated, but still be productive. But if your mind is 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 having issues, it it can be. I, I know I I I also been officially diagnosed with ADHD as well. Really? I went to a neuro um, neuropsychiatrist, I can't remember the exact name, and put electrodes on my head and yeah. we looked at the results and she's like, ah, this is not good. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's and it, it's a it's a real thing. Yeah. And uh, some people those seem to look at some of our issues and, and wear them like a almost like a badge of honor. Yeah. Like do you think that maybe that kind of 
even makes it worse for, for people to talk about having these issues because they've maybe been trivialized or, or romanticized by some and others. People just look at it as like, oh, you're ADHD or just full of it. Yeah, yeah, right. Like if, um, like the, I, you know, that's kind of what I thought. Discipline. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just wanted to try harder. So, you know, it's, when I first kind of started reading about ADD, it's still a year after that before I saw someone. Because for me, ADD is what lazy people said they had when they just right. didn't want to try hard. And I didn't want to be like that. Um, and, you know, I, I think that all of the traits that I love about myself, I can attribute to symptoms of ADD. Less, maybe not all, but a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, and even the bipolar, you know, like bipolar correlates with increased intelligence and it, and it correlates with uh, increased imagination and, and a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of programmers that have been finding out, uh, you know, suffer from bipolar and whatnot. So if I could go back and choose at birth uh, to have or not have ADD and to have or not have uh, bipolar, I, I would take them both, you know, like knowing now what I know about it. Like I, I really do think that it's kind of like having superpowers hours in some aspects and then having like the kryptonite condition in other aspects right. and things like monotony and boredom are kind of like my kryptonite. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, as I've learned that I can work around it. So, and I think you're right. Like I think in, in our culture, you know, there's a lot of symptoms that we attribute to people, uh, to programmers mm -hmm. that are, you know, things like social isolation and, and insomnia and irregular bursts of productivity and kind of thoughts of grandiosity, like thinking that you can change the world. Right. You know? They're not all inherently bad things, but I think that if you're bouncing, if you have these symptoms, you're bouncing around the world, trying to mm -hmm. find a profession, you stumble in like accounting, you're not going to work out there, you know, right. like you st stumble into a whole bunch of other things, but you come to programming. You, you might kind of feel at home. Yeah, you can be a little bit chaotic. You can be a little quirky. Yeah, but but again, that might hide. Yes, the, the, the pursuit of, of a treatment. Yeah. Um, what are what are some things that in your in your discussions with people that you've learned that maybe people were talking about how they've learned to deal and cope with with uh, uh, their issues or seek help? That's a good question. Um, I would say the first thing is just learning that it's okay to talk about it. Um, it's just learning that, and I, I don't know that I answered your previous question, but I, I think that especially for programmers, because so much of our identity and our profession is dependent upon our mind working well, right. that we're extra, and we've been praised for our whole life about how well our brain works, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, that we're extra slow to admit that maybe it's not functioning quite right. Mm -hmm. It's a really scary thing to think that maybe your brain's lying to you or, or you don't have full control over it or whatnot. Right. So I think first and foremost for getting treatment or whatever, the first step is just being having it be as okay to say I am depressed or it's okay to say I have ADD as it is to say I have diabetes or I have cancer or I broke my leg. Um, we treat conditions above the neck way differently than we do everything else. There's so much more stigma. There's so much more, more shame associated with anything happening above the neck than below the neck. So, so, the first thing is talk about it, whether it's with a friend or, um, and then with a therapist or a psychiatrist, uh, is kind of the first step if you want to get, uh, you know, professional help. Mm -hmm. And these are people who have gone to school for a really long time. Like psychiatrists are medical doctors who then spent years after that specializing in learning about the brain. Right. They're very, it's not quackery. Like this is like rooted in scientific method, which we claim to love right. as right. developers. But yeah. once we start talking about brain stuff, we're like, oh, it's I don't want to deal with that. Well, I, I, I definitely, in my experience, have saw that when I went to the, um, and now I'm just drawing a blank on, on what the, the, her title was, but she was a, a neuropsychiatrist, something along those lines. And, uh, uh, it was a hard science, and she worked with a neurologist to do the analysis of, of the results. And I was shown, like, this is after, you know, 10,000 whatever studies, this is what a normal brain pattern would look like, and here's where yours is deviates from the norm, and then there was data. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there it was statistical data over tens, hundreds of thousands of, of scans. And how long ago was that for you? Uh, a year. And what's your experience been like since then? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know that I have, but I've I've not quite had the courage to uh, to really go to the next steps. But one of the things, though, that you know, even before that, I was suspicious I had ADHD, but. 
it's why I also enjoy the community community so much. Um, uh, and I wanted to get to that. Has it been in your experience that, that people, you know, we tend to self isolate. We tend to be just on Twitter, and we think that that's yeah. social. And I think that is a good thing. But sometimes getting out and and doing the old looking people in the face uh, at user groups or conferences or just whatever social things has that been something that has been either positive or oh negative gosh, for people? Yeah. It's been so positive, at least for me. Right. Um, you know, I figured that there were other people like Caleb and like myself who were struggling with this stuff, um, and, and so I started speaking at conferences last year, and um, and then one of the last conferences I did last year, the Business of Software Conference, and so uh, after I told my story in my talk, it's like, you know, just out of curiosity, how many of you struggle with this yourself, you know? Doubt everybody raised their hand, but I, I, my guess is one out of five people raised their hand. Right. Like, out of curiosity, uh, how many of you have been impacted by this in some way, either because a coworker or a loved, ne- a loved one, or family member, spouse, or whoever it comes to? Every single person raised their hand. Right. So this is something that is affecting the entire community, but most people who are going through this are going through it alone because right. they're too afraid to talk about it. And so it has been so encouraging for me to be able to stand up and speak in front of people. And then after I get off stage, have people come up and be like, you know what? Me too. You right. know, like you're, you're not alone, you know? And, and then for those people to be able to then go back to their office or to their meetup and, and there have been like lightning talks, you know, I'll speak, I, I forget where it was, but I spoke and then someone got up and gave a lightning talk uh, the next day and was like, I have depression too. I've been going right. through it for a while. And then like the dude was flocked after, words um but with other people like sharing you know and so that's right. that's awesome and, and, and once you see that you're not just some weirdo yeah and, and isolation does that and that's why getting out and yeah. talking to people and, and finding out oh there's this other thing there's other people uh, uh and and you do have a discussion forum is that still active i Yes, it's not terribly active. You know, it's uh, I have not done a good job of maintaining it, partially because I, you know, I originally set it up as um, after I started speaking, I got a lot of emails, and I was afraid that it was I wasn't going to be able to handle all of that on my own. So I set that up kind of as a place where I could put in touch all of the people that. Um, that I was talking to is that they could kind of talk with one another. And so I kind of built that for the reason because I didn't really have the time in which to manage right. the community. And I was hoping that that would be kind of come self-sustaining. And then I just, I, I have neglected it. So, yeah. uh, but it's at devpress.com and there's a couple of guys who might kind of carry the banner with right. that and pick that up. But that was dev press. Uh, dev press. Yeah. P R E S S E pressed. <laughs> yeah. Like depressed with a V in there. Um, and uh, yeah, but there are even if it's not the people aren't still currently contributing to it. Uh, there are some incredible stories up there, uh, and there are some people who just opened up and just shared like their life and on there. And I think that's just really encouraging for other people to hear. I, I recall when you first. I actually I was there for the when you gave the first talk at uh, Table XI yeah. about what happened to Caleb because oh, I also great. knew I, I also knew Caleb uh, from from Optiva and, and and the community in general. Ruby is a small community yeah. in Chicago. Yeah, and. Um, and then uh, I actually learned uh, a colleague of mine was also suffering from depression and uh, uh, ADHD yeah. at, at, the, at my employer at the time. And uh, that it definitely impacted my feelings about him and gained empathy for each other, yeah. um, I think. And, or at least I, I for him, and, and we talked a little bit since then. But... Um, it is important that we share and we open up and then you find out that there are other people that are dealing with these things and it is a real thing and it's not uh, it's not just you being a weirdo at home and it's not your fault right it's, it's no more your fault than it is if you're your fault for getting cancer but you can just like you if you had cancer and I should do it too <laughs> go and seek some help yeah and that help is not always pharmacological right you know that there are talk therapy there's talk therapy therapy there's just there's even best practice like so for instance with my ADD I learned a few years ago that uh, it was always useful for me to have pen and paper on so anytime you find me um, I'll, I, I started carrying this as a wallet instead and I just put duct tape on here oh, really? and I put uh, an ID and, and credit cards in here um, I always carry a backpack which is basically like my man purse because I know like that if I like on Friday at 5 I'm like oh I'm going to need that book tomorrow I know that that's the one shot I have to remember that yeah 
know, like that my brain's not going to bring that back up again. So yeah. I, I stick the book in my backpack. I never leave the house without my backpack. And then the next day it's like two o'clock. I'm like, shit, I need that book. Oh, I have the book. Yeah. Uh, and so, so there's, there's a lot of tricks. If you just can become aware that like you might not be able to do things the way that, like everybody else does it. And that's okay. You just need to figure out the ways that that works for you. I, the, the, the forgetting the book thing. I, I, I had to go buy a, a fleece uh, at the conference because I, didn't. I, and you know what? And at one point, I recall when I was packing, I'm like, I should go get a fleece. Yeah. I ended up not having fleece, and it's been yeah. pretty chilly here. Yeah. So, yes, I, I totally – so that's a strategy, you know, keeping uh, paper, keeping pen handy, keeping things consolidated. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Yeah, man. And, you know, if you are somebody out there that's, that's dealing with uh, – depression or sadness, just know that I have ADHD, you have bipolar disorder, we're here, and uh, you're not alone. Yeah, and, and you can drop me an email, I'm gb at twilio.com, uh, and, and you know, yeah, you're, two of us have this stuff, and literally, I've met hundreds of people over the last year in our profession, like, I guarantee there's someone else at your office who has this and, and whatnot, so, uh, if nothing else, you know, if you don't have anyone else to talk to, feel free to drop me an email at gb at twilio.com, or I'm at greggyb on Twitter, and, like, I'm more than happy to chat, so. Great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, no sweat. Thanks, man. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.